Hello everyone and welcome to my very first video. I go by the name Niz on social media and I have been a digital, a self-taught digital artist for five years now and I thought about making this video just for fun and to chill, also to try and help some people that I was are lost right now like I was before this five years so this is all based off my personal experience I also want to apologize for my English English is my second language and I'm really nervous right now so sometimes I forget how to talk or my pronounce it my pronouncing and sometimes I'll talk really badly I'm really sorry so let's get started Number one, use preferences and trace. When I was starting art, like other, like many other beginning artists, I saw using reference was cheating, and was not a really good way to help me to improve. <laughs> and this is really dumb. Please use reference, and they will definitely help you to improve. And any artists will probably tell you the same and so many like really like good artists still use references so why is a reference so important and how it will help you to improve first of all it doesn't matter what kind of art style we have everything depends on realism and what's better to represent realism than literally a photo of reality from the reference we have a base to analyze and to guide us instead of starting off in the middle of nowhere and this came this idea is not new like old masters literally had people in front of them while they were painting them and those artists that we just see drawing from memory they reach this point by practicing with reference over the years but if you ask me I I think that memory and imagination itself it's a reference too because if you're drawing a, a arm your brain will give you an image of an arm so it's giving you a reference for you to draw so in the end we are always using references so about tracing this is a little bit tricky but if you are tracing a word that is not yours or uh, that's obviously illegal and even if like people trace uh, legally many people say that it's cheating and it means that you don't know how to draw but i personally don't think it's wrong and that doesn't mean that you are not good at drawing what i usually do is i take pictures of myself or like pictures that i bought or that i know that i can use like free free images i trace it really like simple ways and then i improve the sketch looking for other reference and mixing ideas and make like a really clear sketch this saves me a lot of time and it's also a great exercise for memorizing the human body and proportions uh, a fun fact is that the painter Vermeer did trace it in his paintings and many professional artists also do it or they just take image and paint over it like for example Ross draws does this all the time with hands and in the end it's fine number two don't use pure black or pure white well this is a this is a common mistake uh, between beginner artists and I myself I did this a lot and it's using pure black and pure white for for example shadows and lights and hair color the eyes I used a lot of pure whites to paint hair and as you can see it doesn't it doesn't make the drawing feel alive it just it looks weird just using pure white or pure black and this is because in nature nothing is pure black or pure white because of the 
environment around that affects everything and mainly because there's light everywhere. Even at night you have the light of the moon or artificial lights. So when we are painting we should always use the environment around to our advantage. Before we get into these examples I just want to clarify that I'm not trying to say tell that black, uh, pure black or pure white it's like illegal and you cannot use a little bit of it. Of course you can. You go, you have many drawings that people use pure white or pure white or pure black on it and it's okay really but I'm just trying to say that if you're going to do a character with an environment the environment affects a lot and it's really it's really fun if you play around with the lights and different colors because again the environment affects everything so I have a, here an example at night and we can see that in this tree it feels like everything it's black everything is just black but if you go here with the color pick it has these tones of blue and it does get really close to pure black here but you have many blue tones and this is because of the light of the moon and also because the color of the sky reflects over the trees here we have during daytime we have these mountains and again here this it stays it stays close to it doesn't even stay close to pure black actually so we here we have an image during daytime and these trees we go here and again it's not pure black it's like a dark blue and the shadows are like blue tones and this is because the reflection of the sky affects everything and also the lights of course here the snow instead of just making the snow like you know with gray like the shadow of the snow gray i used to do that a lot you need to play with the color of the sky and make like you know a blue tone because the sky is blue and here we have a painting you can export this in other paintings i really like to do this can we here it's just like browns and greens in the shadows because of the the strong light that this drawing has and here instead of making everything just pure whites the painter plays around with yellows and blues the hair is something that is affected by the environment very easily and i have here some examples because again when i was painting black hair or white hair i was just straight up using black and white without thinking about the light around and the colors of the environment and I have here some examples so right this one right in the middle it's by Whoop and we have a very blue sky and it's daylight and as you can see that the hair is affected by the reflections of the sky and the lights so the hair is like blues and browns because everything is affecting the, the color of the hair here we have the same thing but in the sunset so it's coming darker the environment and it's a very dark blue environment and the hair instead of just being pure black the artist just plays around with the colors and makes it purple and blues just like the environment again this doesn't mean you cannot use pure black on pure white you can but I just think you should use it the minimum amount that you can so you can hear it is it's almost pure black but it's not a big problem because it's just so a little now we have here white hair is by this drawing by ways and it's been, we have a light here but if you go here it stays very far away for pure whites and it's just like browns and yellows 
instead of just you know putting whites and here this is by sergeant and i really like you can see in almost all his paintings he always makes like red like this highlights in the hairs and it's just really pretty it's greens blues reds browns because all the reflection of the water the sky or even the because there's bounce light everywhere so uh, so the floor also reflects lights to the hair like the light coming from the sky reflects over the the rocks and the lights from the rocks reflects over the hair and this and this is very what artists now actually so what some artists like to do it's kind of exaggerate with this so we have here this drawing and this red umbrella the the color of the umbrella is also reflecting over the hair maybe this normally wouldn't happen or if it happened it was not this among of red but you can see that it works really well with the painting because if you play with colors and white can make your drawing really appealing number three view the drawing in grayscale and control it values viewing drawing in grayscale it's seeing your drawing in black and white and control the volumes means that you need to have some kind of contrast between your main focuses with the rest of the drawing my drawings were very flat and this is because I didn't make any kind of contrast between the values of the characters and the background. If this contrast doesn't exist, the main focuses will not stand out and will blend with the rest of the drawing. If you want to see your drawings in grayscale, you have a shortcut in Photoshop and for that you need to go to View, Proof Setup, Custom and dot gain 20% and OK. Now when you click Ctrl Y, we we'll just switch to grayscale. You have other ways to do this, but this is the most accurate way and it's super fast and helpful. Here we have a perfect example of a strong contrast where the values of the character are lighter than the values of the background and even the hair has a small contrast with the background for both of them not to blend with each other. If I'm going to draw a character in the background and I want my character to be in the main focus, I need to have a good contrast between the character and the background. So the simple rule that I just start to follow is or I make my character lighter than in the background or I make the character darker than the background. It's a simple and strong contrast that works perfectly well. But of course you can export a lot of different contrasts in your drawings. What I used to do to kind of know more about this, I collect artwork from artists that I like, I switch the drawings to grayscale and I try to understand the contrast that's they make on the drawing. Number four, flip and use liquify. I had nightmares just about flipping my canvas of my drawings because I already knew they would look super weird and horrible and I didn't want to suffer. So I ran away from this responsibility and I didn't flip once. But please don't do this and don't run away from your responsibilities and this will not help you to improve. You, we must always flip and correct the mistakes and thanks to digital drawing programs it's very fast and easy to correct the mistakes that we see by just flipping out. We usually use it to liquify and you can see me throughout this video that I'm always Flip, flipping the canvas and I always go to liquify and correct the, the mistakes that uh, I see and it's really easy and it's just a really something that you are just going to it's going to be like a habit for you just flip and go to liquify by the time so do this often while you draw 
If you are wondering how I'm flipping my canvas, I'm using a shortcut F2. I don't really remember how I did it, but I'm pretty sure if you just Google it, you can find it very easily. Number 5. I don't know why, but I used to draw with a lot of zoom in and so zoomed in that I could see the pixels on the screen. I don't know what was wrong with me. Please don't ask. <laughs> and this is, this is wrong because when we draw, it's very important to see the drawing as if it were at a distance and it's very important that it's recognizable from afar. And when I say recognizable, I don't mean like you need to see the every detail, it's just, for example, if you're drawing a, a portrait, we need to know that from afar, there's like a face or a human head or something like a portrait. Because this is how the other people will see it. People don't just see the drawings like zoom in. They, we always see the drawings from afar. So we should draw using the full view of the canvas and only when we need to zoom in to depict the, the details of the important focuses. So I have here some examples that we'll go through really quickly. And so I just zoom in in this painting and you cannot really tell what exactly is this because it's just really messy, you have like really random uh, pencil strokes and really like messy colors but once you zoom out it just works, you know that it's grass, rocks, a waterfall and our main focus that is the character is the thing that is more well painted and more detailed. And here we have uh, a drawing by Whoop. He does this a lot of his drawings. And again, our two main focus that are the characters. It's really detailed and well painted, while the background that is the thing that it's less important. It's like really these hard pencil strokes in the chair in the floor and in the stairs and here again this drawing by Waze the character is the most detailed thing about the drawing in the background we can tell what's going on because we can tell there are soldiers fighting around but once you zoom into this the, these characters they just look like really simple and just like squares of color and everything just works from afar. Moving to point six is think while drawing. I don't know if this was just me because I was really dumb. But and you find my and you might find this really stupid, but while I was drawing, I really didn't think of exactly what's going on in the canvas. You know, I was just drawing like a girl and put like a random co color for her dress, for the background and the random types of lighting and just, you know, do things without thinking and just doing everything random. And when I actually start to think and drawing, I feel like I have a really big improvement and it does affect a lot because you are thinking about theory as well in your drawing. For example, now I'm just thinking, okay, let's put the light here because this is the main focus and I want people to look here first instead, here in the face instead of just putting a random light in like in the feet because I don't want people to look in the feet first. That depends off your likes, of course. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. And for me to start thinking, I first needed to learn, like, you know, cover theory about lightning, about composition. And then after I learned these different things, I start to execute them and thinking while I draw. And I think it make a really big change. Uh, number seven will be about compare yourself in a healthy way. So 
When we start art, we quickly compare our work with other professional artists or just artists that we look up to and most of the times we get super discouraged and because we think that we will never be good as them and we will never reach that point and I I was I was like this about Loop's work, whatever he would put a, a masterpiece, I would cry in the corner, just thinking that I would never be good at him. But I think we need to remember that how these professionals were one day also in our position. Art takes time, patience, and practice. And I don't I believe the problem is not the comparison. We make but the way we make it. Com I don't think comparison are necessary pets and they can actually be good and helpful since it makes us analyze our progress. So to not bring myself down I started by comparing myself using small parts instead of a whole image. For example I make a drawing and I think to myself that I did a really good job on the eyes but the lights it's too boring it's okay i got one thing right i'm proud of myself and it's good for us to be proud of ourselves the light is boring fine i will do better i will do a better light in the next drawing another thing that i still do is comparing my work with my work from like the past and this is so helpful because you can see obviously you can see your evolution over the time and it's 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 your like art career so it's also really cool to see how you change your perspectives and what you like and the colors you used and now it's really fun and also I really like to see like professional artists comparing their work now with their like first drawing it's very funny and it brings a lot of motivation because everyone at the start was in this position of we think that we will never be good please don't give up and the most important have fun doing art and if you are thinking that you are not good just make it somehow inside of your head that you are not good yet because one day you will be we are finally on number eight and number eight will be don't be afraid don't be afraid to make mistakes to try new styles to experiment new stuff don't be afraid to draw i was very insecure about my drawings i wanted them to look absolutely perfect with a perfect line arts and if they were looking like trash in the middle I would just stop and never touch him again and obviously you need to make mistakes to learn and to grow from them so please push yourself it's pretty normal to every joy to have we, we like to call it an ugly face, it's super normal. You need to push yourself and keep going. I also was very obsessed about having an art style and I wanted to have like, you know, my unique art style, my art style because I thought that every artist had one and this was like their signature. But this is not completely true. If you wanna one day draw realism and the other day draw anime, just go for it. You don't need to have a unique art style. This is just a general idea that we artists have. You can draw anything you want at any time you want. And just go for it really and take your time on anything that you do. Art is not a competition and remember that art is also about having fun and please take care of yourself also and I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching and I also hope you enjoy the process video. This is a drawing from a challenge that I'm doing that is doing a study of a portrait every day so if you want to see more from me you can follow me i will leave the links down below and have a good day